Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our brand new die set slide on over circles, so let's go ahead and check it out. This set has three dies that are perfect for creating interactive circle shaped slider tracks. They are three and three quarters, two and three quarters, and one and three quarters. And here is how they look on a standard size card. So a five and a half by four and a quarter card. There's the large one, the middle one, and our smallest one. So depending on what kind of card you're making, you could use the different size tracks. So here I'm gonna go ahead and die cut one of these tracks. I'm gonna hold it in place with tape, run it through my die cut machine. And you can see that you're left with an opening then you have the interior circle piece and also a ring, which I'll show you how to use later. So here is how I like to build my sliders. I'm gonna take that ring and put it right into the opening and then I'm gonna put the circle into the opening too. This is to make sure that that middle circle is gonna be exactly in the middle and that ring is giving me the guide for that. So I'm gonna use some post-it note tape to make sure that those hold perfectly in the center. Then I'm gonna flip the whole thing over and I can start to build my slider. So here I'm gonna be taking some foam tape and I'm going to be doubling it up. That double height of foam tape really helps sliders move well. I like using tape, but you could use foam squares and double those up too. So now I've got my doubled up piece and I am gonna cut that into thinner strips for the back of my card. I'm going to start lining these up on my card and I want to make sure that the tape is not going to get in the way of the penny that's going to move on my track. So you can see I have that penny there as a guide to make sure I cut my pieces thin enough for that penny to be able to move freely. Then I can cut some thicker pieces for the bottom since it's so far away from the penny. And you can see that I'm starting to build this track. Now, I need to also have some foam tape in the middle, but you need to once again make sure the penny's not going to get in the way. So I trimmed all those pieces down, and you can see that one was a little too big. So I'm just going to move it, and now the penny can move freely. So I need foam tape in the interior circle, and then I need foam tape on all of the edges. So now my next step is to take a piece of cardstock the same color and the same size and I'm going to peel off all that liner tape and then I can line my interactive part of my card right on top of this base. There you'll see I'm going to hold that all in place. Now because I left that post-it note tape on there, it's going to hold everything in place perfectly. So now I'm going to peel off those pieces and take that ring out with me and you're going to see that that interior piece is perfectly placed. Next, I'm cutting a thin piece of doubled up foam to attach to my penny, and then I'm gonna be using my EK6X powder tool to go along the track to make sure that the penny moves nice and smooth in that track, and I'm also gonna use the powder to remove any stick on the outside of that foam adhesive. So the powder is gonna to stick to any extra adhesive, and now that's gonna help it move super fast and super quick in this slider mechanism. So now I can pop that right in, so I'm just gonna kinda of lift up the center there, and pop that penny right in and it's going to be ready to move along my track. I'm going to take this cute little octopus there and just attach him and show him how awesome he moves around in this circle. I just love the interactive element. It's so cool and so much fun and you can get super creative with it. So now it's time to start making a card. So I'm going to start off with a stitch rectangle here cut from some mermaid cardstock and I'm going to cut two of them and I'm going to decorate them a little bit. So I'm going to be using wood grain backdrops and some Versamark ink to create a tone on tone background. And I'm going to be using my Misty tool so that I can repeat the same exact background on both of these pieces. So I'm just going to cover that whole thing with Versamark ink, stamp, and you'll see there I've got kind of a tone on tone pattern and now I can take my second cardstock piece and repeat it in the same exact place since I'm using the Misty. Now I'm going to take my little wood grain piece here and line it up so that I can continue the pattern all the way down this piece of cardstock and once again I'm going to stamp both of these so that I now have two panels completely covered in a tone on tone wood grain pattern. Next I'm going to use my smallest slide on over die and I'm going to put that right in the center of this cardstock kind of up towards the top and once I find the perfect placement I'll hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through my die cut machine and I'm going to have the beginning of my slider track. And now because I use my Misty tool to stamp both of them with the same exact wood grain pattern I'm going to be, be able to layer the two on top of each other and it's going to look completely seamless and continuous.
Now, once again, to make sure my middle piece ends up perfectly in the center, I'm going to use my ring as a guide and then pop this piece in. And I'm taking some care to make sure that the wood grain pattern lines up perfectly. Once I have that in place, I'm going to hold it in place with my low tack tape, flip it over, and I can start to form my slider track mechanism. So here, once again, I'm going to be doubling up my foam adhesive to make it nice and high so that slider works really well. And then I can start trimming my pieces down to add them all over my card, once again making sure that my penny is going to be able to move in that track without it getting in the way. The other thing I'm making sure too is that it feels nice and steady and firm. And if it doesn't, I can always go ahead and add some more foam adhesive. So you can see I've cut down some skinny pieces and then some wider pieces for the sides. And now I've got a nice and supported area, but my penny is going to be able to move freely. The last step is to put some foam tape into that middle circle to give that some nice support also. And now we can remove all of that liner pieces there to expose the adhesive and we're going to be able to layer the two pieces on top of each other. Once it is firmly in place I can remove that post-it note tape and remove that ring from the center and my slider track will be ready to go. Now, you're going to notice earlier that you didn't really see a penny, you saw a blue disc. Well, there's a reason for that. So I'm making a card with Meow You Doing, and I want the cat to be playing with the yarn. But the yarn is bigger than a penny, so I had to come up with another solution. So I thought I would take the coordinating die for the yarn and cut a bunch of cardstock circles from that, using the same cardstock that is my whole card base. So I'm just going to add some tape runner and start taping all of these cardstock circles together. And I ended up taping about five together. Now this works pretty well. It doesn't have the weight of the penny so it doesn't move quite as smoothly and quickly but it still works. So if you have an image that's too small using a small circle die and some car sock is a great solution for that too. Now just like we would do for a penny, we're going to take that doubled up foam and cut a nice thin piece that's going to fit onto that disc that's going to create the slider mechanism that's going to move around. Then I'm going to take my EK Success Powder tool and make sure to run it all around all the outside edges of that foam adhesive to remove any extra stick that might be there. And then it's ready to pop right into that slider. So I'm just going to put it right in and then pop that little piece up and I'll be able to fit it in there perfectly. And you can see that it's already starting to move around in there. So now it's time to decorate the rest of this card. So I'm using one of the new fancy folded banners and the sentiment from Yao Yu doing this is thank Mew, which I think is so cute. And what I'm going to do is bend those stamps on my block just a little bit so that it follows the curve of this banner. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp it in some guava ink right there in the center. Once it's all stamped, I can start to fold my banner. So the die creates these score lines for you. And so I'm going to fold against one and then two. And on the other side, one going one way and then one going the other. And that's going to create this really cool three-dimensional banner that I just love. I'm going to use a stitch rectangle a little bit bigger than that turquoise size one that we did earlier and cut some of the new rainbow plaid paper with it. And I'm also going to cut some of the purple from the same collection with that same size stitch rectangle as the mermaid piece. And I'm just going to trim it down and that's going to become a floor for my cat to sit on. Now I'm going to have the yarn moving around in this circle. So I'm going to take off that liner tape and attach this cute little yarn ball right to my little piece that's going to be moving around. And then I can line the cat right up under that yarn ball so he looks like he's playing with it. Next I'll add some adhesive to my banner ends and I can line that up right under the cat and then I'll create a card base for this. I'm just going to score and fold along there and then I can add that rainbow plaid stitch rectangle right on there and then my whole slider mechanism can be added on top of that. And then here you can see just how cute this yarn is moving around. I love that it looks like the cat is playing with it. This just makes me smile so much. I just love slider cards and I'm so glad that I can do slider circles now. Now after making this cute little cat one, I knew I had to make an out of this world slider because it's just asking for those planets to be moving. So I'm going to create a galaxy sky, but this time I'm going to use distress inks. On a previous video I used watercolors. And so I'm starting here with some mustard seed, just some yellow ink, and I'm going to go in kind of these little stripes throughout my card. And I'm doing it really randomly, just starting off the paper and then going on. 
and bringing in different colors. So I'm doing also Picked Raspberry and then Mermaid Lagoon. And the reason I'm using yellow, pink, and blue is that if I layer the pink over the yellow, I'll get orange. And if I layer the blue over the pink, I'm going to get purple. And the blue over the yellow, I'm going to get green. So by using three colors, I'm actually going to get all the colors of the rainbow that I need for this kind of cool galaxy. And you can see that it kind of looks like a bit of a mess right now. But I'm going to take my black soot, which is my black distress ink, and now blend it over the whole rainbow background. And I still want some of those colors to show through, and I want there to be darker areas of black and then more like grays. So I'm building up the color more in some areas and less in others. And then now I, I realized that it was kind of looking too black. So I took Chip Sapphire, which is a nice dark blue, and decided to add that on. And then to bring some of that color back, because I added a little too much black, I did the the pink and the yellow and the blue all over again. Now here I'm dipping my hand in some water and just flicking it over this distress ink. And distress ink reacts with water. So I'm going to let that water sit there for about 10 seconds or so. And I'm going to take a paper towel and pick up all of that water. And that's going to create kind of a galaxy-ish looking sky. Now my last step is to dip my little toothbrush here in some white paint. And I'm going to flick the bristles of the toothbrush. And that's going to spray the white paint everywhere, making it look like stars and like it's a galaxy. And I just love how this looks it's so cool so this time I thought it would be fun to create a double slider so I'm actually going to use the medium and smallest slider on one card base I'm going to hold them both in place with some low tack tape run them through my die cut machine and once again I'm going to have my opening my ring and my centerpiece but now for two separate sliders that are moving at the same time I'm going to take my ring for both of them and line that up right there and then I'll be able to line my middle piece right in the center and I'm making sure to line up my whole galaxy painted sky so that it looks nice and continuous and I'll repeat the same process for my smaller slider holding them all in place with some tape flipping it over and now starting to build up my double foam so I'm using double foam again so that it moves nice and smooth and I'm going to be trimming this down into some pretty thin pieces this time because because I have two sliders there's not a lot of room for these pennies to move. So this little tiny skinny piece of foam is going to be perfect so the penny can still move around but I can still have foam on my card. I'm finishing up with adding foam to the center of both of my slider mechanisms and then I can start working on putting this whole thing together. I'm going to remove all of the liner paper and I'm going to layer it onto a piece of black cardstock. And you're going to see what I'm going to do in a second, but the black cardstock is going to be my base for right now. And then I'm going to remove those rings on both of my slider pieces, but I'm going to save those rings this time. And what I'm going to do to make it create the continuous galaxy, which would be almost impossible to repeat on another piece of cardstock, instead I've added some liquid glue to the back of my ring and I'm just going to fit my ring right in there. And it's going to make it look like it's continuous. Continuous. And the reason I did black in the background was if in case any little piece shown, it would just kind of look kind of like part of the galaxy. So this is a great way to continue a pattern. If you don't want to have to create the pattern twice or it's too hard to create it twice, just take your rings and drop them right in there and you can see how cool that looks. So now I'm trimming down my doubled up foam for my penny and my dime. I'm actually using a dime in the smaller slider because there, I'm going to attach a rocket to it and it needed a little bit of slightly smaller moving mechanism. So I used a dime instead of a penny. And I'm going to be taking my EK Success Powder Tool and running it alongside both of the foam adhesives, both on the dime and the penny. And once I feel like there's no stickiness, I can go ahead and drop that right in there. I'm going to repeat the process with my dime and then I can drop that dime right into the smaller slider and now it's time to decorate this card. So I'm going to take my cute little astronaut, add a bunch of tape runner to him and put him right in the center because I want the earth to be revolving around him because it's going to go along with the sentiment on my card. And then I'm peeling off the liner tape on both my penny and dime and adding both the earth and the rocket to those. And then now I'm going to die cut some puffy clouds from some white cardstock. And I wasn't sure how tall to make it so I kind of cut a bigger piece and now I'm going to just mark it with my pencil and trim it off so that it's the perfect height for my sliders. And I'm going to layer a bunch of different cloud pieces so that it looks like nice and billowy clouds out in the galaxy. I don't know why there's clouds in the galaxy, but there are today. <laughs> so I'm just going to trim off that piece because I want there to be taller clouds under the astronaut and then shorter clouds under the rocket. So I'm kind of layering pieces until it looks really nice. So I'm just going to kind of take pieces and put them all 
angled behind each other because no one will ever know that it's like that. And you can see how cool that's looking already. And then I'm going to use doubled up foam tape on this other cloud piece. And you can see I've left a gap there. And that gap is so that the rocket can move underneath the clouds. And so this is another really cool thing to do with these circle sliders is to create something that part when it partly travels through the circle, it actually hides behind something. So I'm going to layer one more little cloud piece on there just to create my final decoration. Then I can peel up the liner tape on this one where I left the gap. And so you'll see there's going to be foam tape on both the left side and then all the way to the right. But we're going to be able to move the rocket, which you'll see in a second. I'm going to add two more planets there to fill in that top space. And now I can create my standard size card base, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm going to be stamping the sentiment that really goes great with this slider card. And that's, it's a special day. Today, the world revolves around you, which I think goes so great with the earth revolving around the astronaut. I'll add a bunch of tape runner to this card base and then I can take my whole slider scene and add that right on there. And I just love how this is looking. It's so cool with the galaxy sky and now there's going to be two sliders moving at once. So there's the sentiment along on the inside and then now here you're going to check out how cool these sliders are going to go. So you see this rocket is going to go right under the clouds and then right out which is so neat. And then they're both going to move at the same time when you move the card. So you'll see there how fun this is. And you can have a lot of fun with this. You could do mermaid scenes, fairy scenes, all sorts of cool stuff with double sliders, which I think is absolutely awesome. Now I wanted to show you a simpler version of this slider because you can either make them complicated or really simple. And so this is one where I just use black cardstock and I only have one slider going on. I use the starry skies die to create some cool stars in the background. And it's a similar idea, but kind of a more simple, easier to replicate one. And then here are the two sliders that we made today. I love the idea of the cat playing with the yarn and then the planets moving through the sky. And I love that you can get so creative and think of really cool things to do with these circles sliders so I cannot wait to see what you guys do with them so you make sure to share them with us thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day bye